He's 27 and four with an ERA of a 1.25. I mean, not many people can say that with that kind of record. She's gonna come with her drop ball. She's a pitch to contact pitcher. She's not gonna overpower you, not gonna strike you out, but she is gonna get you with that down spin. Sander Cock with all kinds of preseason and postseason accolades and honors. We'll take on a Kennesaw State starting lineup led off by Mary Greg Anderson, a transfer from the University of Alabama, getting the start in right field. Hardiman, Cates, Sales, Bailey, Greep, Cooper, Galloway, and Miller round things out for Trip McKay. This is a retooled Kennesaw State lineup, missing some of those big time bats that they had a season ago that really and truly, Kalen, gave Florida State and the entire regional fits. It did. They came out strong and beat Auburn, a big SEC opponent, and really just had people saying, whoa, I had no idea that Kennesaw State was this good. Uh, but that's what they did in our regional. And like you said, they have lost some of their big bats. They lost their leadoff hitter, Dickey, who was absolutely phenomenal. She was a transfer from Georgia. So let's see how they do this year. And so it will be Anderson to get things going. The Florida State defense, we've introduced you to Kat Sandercock. Obviously, a lot of familiar faces have returned for Florida State. Sid Sherrill, certainly not the least of them. And there's a nice mix of experience with youth as you see the young catcher, Michaela Edenfield, who got her Florida State career started off with a pickoff in the first inning against Mercer in the Knowles opener of the season. So let's set the defense for you. Around the infield, it's Cheryl Muffley Flaherty as it's been. Bethany Keene, the transfer from USF, joins them in Sandercock. Out in the outfield, it's Mudge Janai Kerr back from an ACL injury. Kaylee Harding as she's been in right. And Edenfield, the freshman, gets the call behind the plate for Lonnie Alameda in Team 39. Craig Hyde will do the honors for us at home plate. Colin Balls and strikes. It'll be Jim Cooper at first. Robert Guest at third. Great evening. Crowd filing in here at Joanne Graff Field for the Joanne Graff Classic. And we are underway between the Owls and the Seminoles. A strike up in the zone for Catherine Sandercock to get started against Mary Greg Anderson. And Kat really started working hard on her rise ball last season to be able to complement that drop ball that she has. And as you can see right there, that first pitch, she comes in with an upspin pitch, a little bit of a screw, just like we saw there. It's got a little bit of a screw spin, but it is an up pitch, and that's going to be able to change the viewpoint of the hitters. 1-1 one, one count to Anderson. I mentioned just a minute ago that she transferred from the University of Alabama, where she was predominantly a pinch hitter. So she makes the move to Kennesaw State in this, her sophomore season. And as she slaps that ball foul, it's quite the adjustment, isn't it? Now you're being called on to hit, and not only that, but they've seen enough out of her to put her at the top of the lineup. They have, and as you can see, Kat is going at her with those outside pitches. That's something that you want to do to a lefty slapper. You want to take away their game. Their game is to get the ball on the ground. And so what is Kat doing? She's throwing those pitches up and away to try and take away that ground ball. Early K-time chance as Anderson just caught a piece of that pitch to keep the count one and two. Pitch count now at four for Sandercock. Fresh faces at the one and two spots for the Owls. Anderson, a sophomore, but really new to batting. And then Hardiman is a freshman who's getting starts up the middle at short for Kennesaw State. Line drive snared by Cheryl Rince Lather. Repeat, the three-time ACC Defensive Player of the Year doing what she does. Like I said in game one, that's where balls go to die. Like coaches says, area 24. You don't want to hit the ball to Sid Cheryl because she's going to get you out. And so here's Hardiman stepping into the plate. And let me go back to it. A freshman earning starts up the middle for Kennesaw State. That is quite the impressive nod to a youngster because there's a lot of adjusting you have to do, Kalen, to go from high school to D1. It's the whole big fish, small pond to small fish, big pond kind of scenario. And then to have the responsibility of handling things up the middle where everybody wants to be the strongest. If she's starting there, they've seen a lot out of her. Yep, and you can see too, you're gonna have a freshman mindset no matter what coming into the first few games of the season. And you can see her take that swing and miss 
knowing that Kat's a down ball pitcher, you have to be able to prepare yourself for that. And as a freshman, it's going to take her a little while to be able to see the spin of pitches and be able to tell what that pitch is going to do so that she can adjust and make the right play. The youngster moving ahead in the count two and one at a Covington, Georgia. And there's her head coach, Trip McKay, has done an incredible job at Kennesaw State. You mentioned that upset of Auburn. Gave Florida State fits two in the opener in the regional. Going into the fifth inning, the Owls were up 2 nothing. They were. and But it's funny, Florida State, you know, last season was a, a completely different team. And honestly, we didn't score much. We really didn't. And we had, you know, a saying we were going to scratch a run. We were going to do whatever it takes to scratch a run out. And they did. They gave us a hard time. Fortunately, though, we were able to scratch a run out. And it was the first win of a uh, almost indescribable postseason run for the Seminoles, who again continue to carry the banner of the ACC, a much stronger ACC, by the way, with four teams in the top 25. And it was the Virginia Tech Hokies that put four players on the preseason all-conference team that Kat Sander caught the pitcher for the Seminoles is also a member of. Yeah, the ACC, just the overall strength of the conference is astounding how it's grown so quickly with Clemson, Duke, Notre Dame, Florida State, all being such big names now. People see that on their schedule and they're like, oh, we're gonna have to come and play hard this week. Hardeman battled and battled and battled she did, but she ends up getting frozen on an inside pitch. The first K in the count for Katherine Sandercock. You can see Kat comes in with that down ball. You can see the down movement going in, trying to jam her if she was to swing and just breaking and it's beautiful. First two retired, it gets a little tougher. As we go from fresh bases on the Kennesaw State roster to one that has been well established. Taylor Cates, the senior third baseman, out of Canton, Georgia. The RBI leader amongst returning players on this Owls roster drove in 41 runs a season ago. Sandercock really bringing in the speed this game. She's consistently around 68, which combining that with her movement is deadly. First team all-conference honors for Cates a season ago was named to the A-Sun all-tournament team as well. Lays off that one away and Sandercock cautious of Cates and her ability to produce at the plate throughout the course of her Owls career has fallen behind 3-0. Cates led the Owls in home runs a season ago the power indicative of her spot in the order. And there's the first strike. And you can see the difference between Kat's demeanor versus Danielle Watson in the first game. Danielle is very aggressive. She's very icy, whereas Kat is very even keel. She's easygoing. You'll see her crack a smile every now and then. She's having a lot of fun out there. Bouncer up the middle. And Josie Muffley could not catch up to it. And so it appears it will be ruled an error on the Seminole shortstop. And with Kate stationed aboard, that brings up Cheyenne Sales. Sandercock hits with the first pitch strike to Sales, a member of last season's preseason A Sun team member. 
Sales is the kind of hitter that you definitely show respect to. I can remember when we were talking about plans of how we wanted to pitch to her. We never wanted to give her anything too good. We didn't want to allow her to take control and use that power that you can tell that she has. She's a strong player. So right here, Kat's going to want to be really smart and try to get her to swing at her pitches. Batting average 231 last season for sales. Ground ball to Cheryl, and that is almost automatic. Sydney Cheryl retires the Owls catcher at first, and despite an error, the Seminoles work efficiently through the first. Lindsey Kite gets the nod for Kennesaw State here against the Seminoles. Melanie Bennett threw earlier today against Loyola Chicago. And so it is Kite's turn to try her chances against Lonnie Alameda's Seminoles here in Florida's capital city. Kite last year, Kalen, went five and seven on the year. ERA a touch over four throughout 20 appearances, made 13 starts, went 66 and a third, struck out 43, went three complete games, um, and, and struck out as many as six in a game. And so Kite will square off with this Florida State batting order, which has made it very clear that despite who you might deem to be a contact player or a power hitter, they all have plenty of pop. Kaylee Mudge with a home run and a real statement against Mercer earlier. She leads things off with Cheryl Leonard, a triple and a home run for her, a home run for Harding, Edenfield, Keen, Kern, Flaherty, and Muffley rounding things out at the bottom. Super exciting, hoping to see the same power from Mudge that we saw in the first game. I was not expecting that at all. I was not expecting her to come out and just absolutely drop a bomb over right field fence, but she did, and I would love to see it again. What a big stage for Lindsey Kite here in Tallahassee against a team that was just a handful of outs away from a national championship. and. That's a tough team to try to beat twice. Nobody was able to do it all season. And Oklahoma, they brought a lot of that talent back. But based on what we've seen, Florida State can slug right with them, it would appear. I, and I think that's what excites me the most is that, you know, people were talking about the amount of home run power that Oklahoma has had this weekend so far. Look at the amount of home run power that Florida State has had this weekend. You know, reigning national competitors both just absolutely slugging. Mudge herself, a member of the Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. I guess you would earn a nod like that when you set the record for hits at the Women's College World Series. Here's something, Kaylin, that can put this into more context, right? A lot of folks said, wow, 14 hits. That's a record out in OKC. She had 30 on the year. That's 14 in a week. Yeah, Mudge absolutely came alive there at the end, and she... It's just a true testament to her work ethic. I lived with Mudge, um, she was my roommate, and so I can vouch for how hard this girl actually works because when she's not at the field doing, like, doing extra, putting in more work, she's at home and she's watching softball and she's studying the game and she's working on her mentality and, and she's an even sweeter human being, so it just makes it all worth it. Spoiled the three two there, Coach Alameda told us there were some real hard conversations that she was willing to have where she basically said, tell me what I need to do. Tell me how I can bring value to this team. And then following those conversations, Coach Alameda said she put in so much work that it didn't surprise any of her teammates in the least that she had that showing in OKC. Right. And that's a quality plate appearance to get things started here as well. Right, and like I said, I can vouch for that. I was with her the most out of anybody and she puts in the work and it just makes you that much more happy for her when she does have that success. And there's Coach Alameda looking on from the home dugout. As Sid Cheryl steps in here, Mudge on the run, one of the many speedsters on this Florida State roster. We've talked about the power that the Seminoles possess this season, but make no mistake, that speed that they used to really create chaos last year, they've got a lot of that as well. Right, and speed game has always been such an important part of the Florida State game. They continuously drill base running, they continuously recruit players who are quick so that they can be successful on the base pass. And just like that, a pitch gets away, and because of the stolen base, now Mudge moves another 60, and off a walk to lead this game off, Florida State's got a player 60 feet away. Right, right. I mean, we 
had over a hundred and something stolen bases, I believe, last season. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty positive that was the stat. And so it's just that's what we do. That's what Florida State does. They're they're going to steal bases. And so we see already a conversation between Lindsey Kite and her catcher Cheyenne Sales. And Kaylin, I want you to take me back to you as a young pitcher on the road, big matchup, and all of a sudden the reality of everything hits. How do you handle that? Well, I think, you know, for me, I really kind of came into my own when I realized to take the pressure off of myself because I was the one putting the pressure on myself. So when you're here and you realize, hey, I'm just playing softball like I've always played since I was in t-ball and I'm just out here and I'm here to have fun and not to allow the game to be too big and not to play the jersey but just to play softball. She's popped up Sydney Sherrill and it just gets out of the reach <laughs> of Kate's. But that's a good point too. It's an opportunity to play softball. It's right. not a chore, it's not a command, it's not an obligation. It should be fun. It is, it is fun. And I wish that I could suit up right now and go out there. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of folks here that are just glad to have you here. I'm certainly <laughs> glad to welcome you into the broadcast side of things. And we certainly look forward to a fun season. Thank you. Count goes full to Cheryl. Florida State perhaps could start this game off on offense with consecutive walks, and indeed they will. Rise ball floated well high of the strike zone, and now the runners are on the corners. It's hard, too, because Kite is a lefty, and so usually she's used to being able to dominate against righty batters, but the first three hitters in the Florida State lineup are all lefties, so that takes away her advantage right there, and I know that that's something that she probably is thinking about. And so an early conversation to settle things in taking place. She was really excited and, and made a big point to say that the team was riding off of each other's energy. It's kind of ironic that she's from a town called Normal, Illinois, because the power and the talent is far from normal. Exactly. A player who hit north of 400 last year on base percentage north of 500. Obviously, there's always the questions as to can that carry over once you move to a new location. We'll set aside competition and level of, of you know, the teams that you play uh, for a second, but I mean, just moving and going to a new place and establishing yourself in the middle of that. Kaylin, you experienced that yourself. I did, I did, and that's something that Coach o really tries to work on with her transfers is to allow them to become a part of the culture. And it takes time, it takes trial and error because you're so used to a culture that you were previously a part of, something that was drilled into you and now you have to come in and try and find your role. But Coach o has said that Mac and Bethany Keene have both done a really great job of finding their own within this Florida State team. So it appears an injury is the concern here for Lindsey Kite, who keeps shaking out that wrist. And so everybody's taking a look to see whether or not they're going to stick with her or whether it's in the best interest for her medically to have her come on over to the dugout and take a look at some things and reassess some things. We'll take another look at what they've been looking at here while we were taking a look at some highlights. It looks like, you know, maybe her hand, the way that they're massaging it, could possibly be cramping. Um, I saw them doing some stretches, you know, trying to stretch out that forearm. Uh, I, I think it may be more muscular than it is, you know, uh, bones or joints, but hopefully, because muscular, you can always work it out. They'll stick with Kite for now. And with Mudge and Cheryl on via a walk, she now squares off with Mac Leonard. In addition to the home run, also recorded a triple in a 3-4-3 three three showing. 
So welcome to the roster. Welcome to Tallahassee, Mac Leonard. We're glad to have her. Glad to <laughs> add any kind of explosive power to this roster. Kite stays down and away. And it is hard as a pitcher. You can see Kite looking at that hand, stretching in between pitches. It, it becomes mental. It becomes something that you're constantly thinking about. Jammed up a mile high in the air. And Mudge will come in and try to swim around the tag. She didn't get there. What a play by the Owls. That was. What a great throw. I mean, it was just perfectly online, and they were able to tag her before she was able to get to the plate. Number eight, Kaylee Harden. You can see Mudge just takes off with no hesitation, just a little too late on her slide, a little too far out, but that throw was absolutely perfect. And now just one out away if you're Kite. It's been a rocky start. You've walked a couple people. The hand has, we presume, cramped up a little bit, but that is a huge out. It keeps the scoreboard clean. And if you can find a way to retire Kaylee Harding, which isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do, but if you can find a way to retire Kaylee Harding, the sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you can get back to that dugout and you might actually steal some momentum. Yeah, I mean, being able to get out a power hitter like Kaylee Harding is not an easy thing to do. ACC freshman team a season ago was also on the all ACC third team. There are her numbers, 278 batting average, six home runs, really had some big moments in Oklahoma City. Number of RBI as well. This one off the end of the bat and that flare will drop. Shallow out in right. Cheryl turning for third. Runners are back on the corners for Florida State. One of the main adjectives that we always used as a team to describe Kaylee was clutch. She is so clutch in every situation. When you really need a hit, she's there for you, just like in Oklahoma. Right there, I mean, that ball jams her, but she still is able to power it out and get it into that open gap in right field. In OKC, you know, she had that awesome clutch home run, and then she had that clutch relay throw from third base, or to third base. And there she is chatting with the volunteer assistant coach here, Kaylee Rafter, who played here, was the catcher for Team Canada and was recently named, or fairly recently we should say named, the head coach of Team Canada. And so what a pickup on the coaching staff for Coach Alameda as Coach Rafter waits in the wings there behind Kaylee Harding. Lots of Kayleys here, much a lot of Harding, Kayleys. Rafter. Kayleys, Kaylins, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. One and one now the count to Edenfield. Michaela. Kayla. Yeah. Freshman from Sneeds, Florida. If you weren't with us earlier, real interesting story, and Coach Alameda mentioned it. We'll see if we can fit this one in here with two outs on the board. Played volleyball growing up, was a real gifted volleyball player, four-time state champion, and was a phenomenal athlete. You can see it on your screen but really wasn't the best softball athlete. So red shirted and they worked on that. And so she will head back to the dugout with the remainder of her teammates. Opportunities for the Seminoles. Kennesaw State erased them. Good crowd on hand here. Opening night of Florida State softball. Their star in the circle is Katherine Sandercock. And with more on Cat, here's Emily Peterson. Yeah, Sean, you and Kaylin have mentioned just the awards and the accolades of Katherine Sandercock, but you really can't say enough about what this player brings to the Seminole squad. And it's all a reflection of the player who she is. She loves film. She wants to get better. And this season, she'll be adding leadership to that repertoire of talent. So it'll be very exciting to watch her grow in that regard this season. You said she was able to. Yes. Um in a way. Yeah, so Kaylin, um, the demeanor for Katherine Sandercock is, is something that you have been talking about for a while and how she can really stay calm under pressure. And, you know, I think to some degree to the point you're making there, um, she can let the moment get to, I think it's human, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
It's human. However, I'm told that as this base hit goes into opposite field, we might have some other video that might speak to a little something else. Bailey goes opposite field into left. Let's take a look at this, Kalen. <laughs> yeah, so like I was saying, out on the mound, Kat is pretty even keel. She's, you know, she's going to have fun out there. She's going to be composed. And yeah, right there, that video definitely contradicts what I was saying. <laughs> now, going back to that base hit for Bailey, that's a good piece of hitting. Opposite field down the line. Yes, definitely. Nice work by Brenaya, the junior from Loganville, Georgia. And again, there's her coach, Trip McKay, looking on. And so this is where things can get a little tricky if you're Florida State. You had some opportunities. You credit Kennesaw State for making the play at the plate and then for erasing the runners on the corners so they get out of there. But then on top of that, not only do they keep you off the scoreboard, but now they go back to the dugout. They're feeling a little bit more of that juice. They come right out, opposite field base hit. Now all of a sudden the momentum's shifting. Right, right. And so right here, you have a runner on first base, and what you want to try to get is the double play. So Kat's going to be looking to try to induce something over to the left side of the field. We want to keep that runner either at first or we want to get the double play. And for a down ball pitcher, too, fits right into her repertoire. It does, it does. But right now you can see that Kat's actually going up and away. So this hitter... That's either a weakness of hers or they have a specific plan in mind. Well, that hitter is Katie Greep, the center fielder out of Mableton, Georgia. Greep, a senior, comes up empty on the rise ball. So like we talked about earlier, Kat has been developing this rise ball that complements her drop ball so effectively. Right here you can see that Greep just gets right underneath it. She can't lay off of it. and. It, people don't expect Cat to come in with that type of a pitch. Inside to Cooper, called ball one. Kiara Cooper. Appeared in 13 games a season ago, hit 222. And that'll drop right there by the glove of Hardy? Or did she catch that? She did not catch it. It dropped right there, but she was able to jump up really quick and make the throw to second, and they were able to get her out. Clutch. Like I said, Kaylee Harding is clutch. So right there you can see it takes a short hop, and she just turns and fires the ball to second. So the base hit drops, but credit Kaylee Clutch, apparently, <laughs> for getting the force at second. Heck of a play by Josie Muffley ranging to her right. And so Kennesaw State records a couple of hits. They leave them wanting scoreless to the bottom. That softball has seen better days, but just when you're having a rough day, you got somebody to pick you up. Figuratively and literally, Kaylin. Yes, definitely. We have a pitching change for Kennesaw State. Yeah, and that is Emily Perrin, the junior right-hander from Winder, Georgia, right in that Atlanta area. A lot of players on this Kennesaw State roster, and I don't think it's really any surprise, are from some of the suburbs and some of the small cities in South Georgia and around that Atlanta metro area. This is another one of them, uh, a newcomer to the program, so doesn't have any track record with the Owls, so to speak. And so it'll be fun to see what she's got here today. Definitely. And yeah, I'm not surprised that they ended up taking out Kite because I think her hand was just bothering her a little too much. If not physically, then also mentally, she was thinking about it. And as a pitcher, you can't be thinking about anything but what pitch you're throwing next. And Perrin, just to go back to where she's come from, obviously from one of those Atlanta suburbs, but she pitched in 13 games a season ago at Florida Southwestern State. So a really good program at the JUCO level. And that was before the 2020 season got canceled. And so then she transferred, had to sit out the year, did that whole song and dance. And now here she is trying to make the most of an opportunity this season as a junior. 
was the Georgia Triple A Pitcher of the Year with an ERA of .92 before heading to Florida Southwestern State. So some good numbers for Perrin. Just not a huge sample size for us to really see as we get ready to go here, but we're about, we're about to change that here. All right. She'll square off with Bethany Keene, a player that teammates call BK, one of a couple of players, she and Nack Leonard, that Coach Alameda expects to rotate out at first. Leonard has significant pop. Keene has hit solidly for the average, and she does have plenty of pop as well in her bat. Yes, those two are great accommodations to this Florida State team in terms of just all around athletes who can hit. Keen also a staple at first when she was at South Florida. From the drop there with the Bulls, largely had been their everyday first baseman. Started every game of the last two seasons with the Bulls. That was a big hack <laughs> by BK, as we like to say, big daddy hack. Count 2-1. Nearly wore that one on the helmet. And just like any human would, get the heck out of the way. Right. That's always stressful as a pitcher. You know that you want to come in up and tight with those rise balls, but sometimes they just have a little bit of a mind of their own, and they go more towards the batter than what you were hoping. Count 3-1 to Bethany Keene. Ground ball right back up the middle, off the glove at second, and she beats the throw into first. Galloway could not collect it and refire in time. Stepping up to the plate, number four. Second Nine. error we've seen in this game. Galloway, another freshman getting the start up the middle. So two freshmen at short and at second for the Owls in Hardeman and Galloway. And you know, those errors that you're gonna see early on in the season, they're just freshman mistakes and they're gonna learn from it and continue to grow and get better as the season goes on. Speaking of freshmen, Janai Kerr is a red shirt freshman coming off a year where she got off to a hot start offensively then promptly tore her ACL, so it's good to see her back and healthy. She went one for one. Excuse me, she went two for three uh, in the first game. Janai is one of those players where she's little, but she's mighty, and she's gonna bring power and she's going to pack a punch just like look at that hack that she just took she's got such a strong swing just so much power and a, such a little body that was a pop-up pulled foul and i don't know if it's come out of the stratosphere yet hospitality major out of mableton georgia Looks like somebody might have dropped their glasses out in the infield, so a momentary delay and we all reset. And Perrin stays away from Kerr. You can see Perrin is staying low and away from Kerr. She's respecting that Kerr has power and that Kerr is able to drive the ball. She doesn't want to give her anything in the zone. Pulled that one to the first base side and Bailey is able to scamper back and apply the tag to the plate. 
to retire Janai Kerr. Got to get back in a hurry. She can fly down the line. She can. She's quick. She's another one of those speedy players that Florida State has on their roster. And good job by Perrin for getting that ball in close enough to be able to jam her. That does advance Keen into scoring position for Devin Flaherty. Flaherty, two at-bats in the first game against Mercer. Recorded hits in both. Hit leader for the club last season. 52 to Sid Sherrill's 51. Junior out of Sarasota. Like we talked about in the first game, Devin is one of those players that's always going to be consistent. She's someone who doesn't do a lot of the big flashy things, but she's one that's always going to be making those contact hits, always making really great plays at second base, just consistency all around the board. And because of that was named to the all ACC first team a season ago, now going opposite field, and this will get the scoring started. Without a doubt, King comes in, she will score safely, and Flaherty slides into third as well. One of my favorite aspects of Devin's game is her base running. She is so quick, and she uses that speed to her advantage. She is a very smart base runner. You can see as she turned that into a triple, she just keeps her head up. She's watching the ball, seeing where it is on the field, and knowing how far that she can get. Right there you can see she just takes that ball to the left side of the field, absolutely crushed, and just never stops. She just keeps on running. One nothing Knowles off the Flaherty double and off the bobble and the throw. As you mentioned, Kalen, she turned it into a triple. So she stands 60 feet away, only one out on the board. This is the bottom of the order, Josie Muffley. Muffley, the senior, she transferred from Tulsa, has made a number of web gem type plays defensively for Florida State. And she'll look to lay down a beautiful bunt here. The flip to the plate does not get there. Two nothing, Florida State. And that is one of the biggest aspects of Florida State's game, is playing that small ball. And Josie knows that her role is to get that bunt down so that Devin can score from third. And she did exactly that. So right here, you can see it. Josie, she just gets her head down, she runs. She lays down the bunt perfectly, and Devin's already there to score. So Muffley scores Flaherty off the bunt single. And now the order turns over to Kaylee Mudge. Off goes Muffley. She'll make her way back. Knowles were setting up the hit and run there. Mudge fouls another one off. It goes 0-2. And, and the ever-aggressive Josie Muffley stationed at first, looking for an opportunity to perhaps slide into second. And you know what you also slide on, Kalen? Snow. Oh, that's and right. Yep, Josie is from Michigan. And so right now at her family's home, there is snow. And so, Josie, we're going to give your mom a shout-out. Not only do you think your mom's Florida State snowman is cool, we do too. Definitely. I'm sure her mom would love to be down here right now in the warmer weather rather than up there in the snow, but. Yeah, you aren't kidding. We walked outside the office today on our way over here to the softball complex, and it was the picture perfect Sunshine State, beautiful day to have a beautiful day type of deal. It was, it definitely was. Off-speed, fouled off by Cheryl.
So you got the speed of Muffley at first, and you've got a dangerous hitter at the plate that, as you can tell, Perrin trying to work away from. Brought that one in, and this one off the end of the bat pops up into foul territory. Kate secures it for out number three, but that comes after an RBI double. Flaherty goes to the left center gap, scores her teammate Bethany Keene. She turns it into a triple by grabbing the extra 60. She'd score as well. And it's the start of a new year for everybody around the country. So we're all excited softball's back now. And you mentioned the crowd here, like just sitting, sitting surrounded by it. What can you say about the development of this program at Florida State? Well, it's been phenomenal. They've actually sold out season tickets. So now they're talking about adding seats. And I think that just speaks to the growth of softball around the country and also the impact that television has had on the growth of the game. It's been phenomenal and I think it'll continue and just get more and more exciting as the years go by. And again, you mentioned softball globally growing just nonstop. And you know, you played a really huge role in that and still do here with this legacy. What can you kind of say about that? Just the growth globally? Well, I think globally, it really needs to pick up a little bit. And I think getting it back in the Olympics when it goes, I think, to Paris, um, or actually, I don't think it's in Paris. I think it'll be in L.A. It will, that, that will make a big difference globally. So it has to get back in the Olympics, and it has to stay there. And then I think globally, it'll pick up because it is so exciting. And I think the other countries will kind of piggyback off the enthusiasm of the United States and their crowds. Well, we're lucky to be sitting here in the crowd at Florida State for sure, and I won't keep you from watching it any longer. We've waited long enough for softball to be back, so thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Emily, thank you so much. While you're sitting there, go ahead and chat with her a little bit. It's always fun to hear Dr. Graf go down memory lane, and it's always fun to watch Sydney Cheryl do what she does. My goodness, another cannon-type throw over to first across the diamond by the three-time defensive player of the year in the ACC. Yes, another ball goes to die in area 24 and Sydney takes it and throws it and it's out and it's an automatic out on almost any time the ball's hit to Sydney. And I'm gonna stick with that because I'm obsessed with the area 24 reference that coach keeps bringing up. I mean, I, I feel like this could catch on. I hope it does. I That's feel what like, I'm trying to get it to do. I feel, like, I feel like this could catch on. But how about that? That was a cool little sequence. We got to see the field getting dedicated. You know, we heard the video earlier that she narrated. Uh, it's the Joanne Graf Classic. And Emily was able to go down there and chat with her as well. I mean, no surprises that she'd be here sitting right above home plate. I don't, a, player, or a player and a coach like Dr. Graf got to, you know, somehow find a way to be a fan and not a coach, even though you're in the stands, but she really has enjoyed coming back to the program and, and supporting the Seminoles throughout um, these years since she's retired. Right, and those are her special seats. That's been her seat. No one else is allowed to sit there, <laughs> so the, she has it reserved, and she deserves it. She deserves so much, and we are so honored to be able to have her here and have an opportunity to play on Joanne Graff Field. Quick conversation in the circle between Michaela Edenfield, Catherine Sandercock, and the Florida State infield, a 2-0 count. As we go back to the top of the order and marry Greg Anderson. What I love so much about those meetings is that everybody in the infield comes in, you create a plan, they ask Kat, what do you want to throw right here? She tells them and then they go with it. And it's just, it's so player led. And there's the first strike against Anderson as we start the second trip through the order. And it was Edenfield who had the wherewithal to come on out and have a conversation. Those are decisions and communication tactics that you're going to develop over the course of your career. And she's just at the starting gate. 
Right, and I mean, it just shows like how she's been able to mature throughout the fall and throughout her experience last year in the bullpen. She got to work hand in hand with Anna Shelna. She saw Anna's tendencies and Anna told, you know, the things that you need to do to be a successful catcher here. And she definitely caught on and, and it's great to see that. And so Sandra Cock has battled back from being behind 2-0. It's 2-2 now to Anderson who Played in 15 games a couple seasons ago at Alabama, and she strikes out here. Good response by Sandercock after falling behind early. You can see here, Cat comes in with that nasty draw ball. You can see just right underneath the barrel of the bat. Such a great job, such good spin. Here is Ty Hardeman. Swinging through strike one. trying to get her to bite on that low drop ball out of the zone. She did earlier in her first at bat, but she's learned this second round not to chase after that pitch. Two one to Hardeman. And you can see that pitch that's moving down and away from the zone. That's Cat's two seam drop. It's extremely deadly. It has this awesome movement, like I said, that moves not only down, but also away from the hitter. Sander Cock fields her position well, and how about the pitcher fielding that infield attempt? Cat is a great fielding pitcher. We call those PFPs. It's what we do, and I absolutely love the fact that she's able to show how important a fielding pitcher is in the infield. Good work. The war chant in Tallahassee, and this crowd is fully engaged. Florida State out to a 2-0 lead over Kennesaw State out of the Atlantic Sun Conference. Each team with a couple hits apiece. Leading off, Here at the, the, the third, Joanne Graff Classic, Joanne Graff yeah. Field at the Winner. Seminole Softball Complex. Sean Davison, Kaylin Arnold, Emily Peters, and our entire crew here on hand as the reigning national runners up, the Florida State Seminoles, ranked sixth in the country or perhaps, you never know, back on the hashtag road to WCWS. So many things to see, so many storylines to unfold that we haven't even begun to witness yet. Right, it's just the beginning, it's just the start of this journey, but I'm already, I'm up for the hashtag road to the Women's College World Series if we're up for it this early. <laughs> but, you know, same thing like last season, we really wanna take this time early on to figure out who we are as a team, figure out what we need to work on, how to make ourselves better, what's gonna prepare us, like coaches said, for the Women's College World Series because we had players who went but who haven't played. So they need to learn what it takes to play in the Women's College World Series. Mac Leonard, a new face on the roster. A transfer in from Illinois State. So has playing experience, knows what it takes to do well. It's just acclimating to a new place, a new conference, new opponents, etc. She's off to a good start. And I think to your point, um, Emily mentioned earlier how Coach Alameda's three keys for the weekend was play free, be aggressive, and learn how to communicate in the moment because you are mixing new faces with older faces and coming together and getting on the same page. What she also told us was wins would be nice, but she didn't really seem to be dead set on we've got to win every, four you know, every one of the four games this weekend. As Leonard nearly beat the throw to first, it'll be out number one. Good play by the Owls. 
and the freshman Galloway. But she said winning would be nice, but she was more focused on the long-term principles, tendencies, and intangibles. Right, well, it's the process. You really want to trust and engage in the process, understanding, like you said, what it takes, having those big girl conversations, and allowing your teammates to call you up. Well, speaking of up, that ball was popped way up off the bat of Kaylee Harding. Cates comes in to corral it. And that one had some serious hang time, just missed it. And so two outs recorded here in the bottom of the third. Perrin doing a good job of keeping the Owls within touch. She is. She's doing a good job so far. I think location of her ball has been key. She's done a really good job of keeping the ball off the plate or jamming it way inside on the batters. Now working on the freshman, Edenfield. Down below the zone it goes, one and one. I'll go back to the story I was talking about Edenfield. We'll see if we can finish it now because she keeps coming up with two outs, but I mean, that volleyball program she played for back in high school was a powerhouse. Sheila Roberts, notoriously known for winning state championships. And Edenfield was a fixture in that process. She was an MVP. She was all kinds of statewide accolades for her volleyball skills. And then came here and Coach Alameda said, let's try you at softball. So far, looks pretty darn good. Base hit to get things going here in the bottom of the third. Right, Michaela has all the tools to be successful. It's, is she going to be able to overcome the mentality of the game? And softball, in my opinion, is 90% mental and 10% physical. So you've got to be able to have that strong mental game to be successful at this level. Edenfield takes off with a big lead at first as Bethany Keene took a look at ball one. Pulled down the line and right at Bailey at first. Good job by Perrin and the Owls defense to keep them within touch. We'll chat with Florida State's head coach, Lonnie Alameda, after this. Seminole Softball Complex and folks even setting up a table outside the left field wall here at Joanne Graffield. They're watching Florida State take a 2-0 lead over Kennesaw State. Their head coach, Lonnie Alameda, is standing by with Emily Peters. Thank you, Sean. Coach, what did you tell your team in between games this afternoon? Um, I mean, just good job, but it's game two. You know, we got to get something to eat and then get back out here and refocus and get after it. Now, looking ahead at this weekend, what have you seen from your team so far that you would like to improve on? Um, I mean, I think it's kind of early. I just love how we're coming out and swinging the bats. Uh, I think the defense is getting used to kind of some newbies out there. We had some freshmen out there at some point, you know, getting ready. So too early to tell right now, but I do like the mindset and, you know, the all-in mindset from the dugout too. Well, hope to keep the momentum up. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, Emily, thank you. As we get set to rejoin the action here, Catherine Sandercock has largely done a really nice job, has given up a couple of hits, but that's really been just about it here so far, Kalen through the first three innings of work of 2022. Right, Kat has done a phenomenal job of just coming out and setting the bar for this Florida State defense, and her offense has been able to play off of the defensive success and been able to produce two runs for her. So there you see the Owls in the visitors dugout very much in this, and so you have to imagine that's the mentality over there. I'm sure, and you know, coming off of the regional loss, they want to come out and they want to prove themselves. They wanted this rematch, and they have done a great job of not allowing Florida State to get too far ahead. All right, so we head back to the action here, and this is a good part of the lineup to get something going if you're Kennesaw State. Kate's first pitch swinging, Cheryl, no problem.
One of my favorite things to watch about Sydney Sherrill when she's fielding the ball is her transfer from her glove to her throwing hand. It's so quick and it's so smooth. And it's just like, you just want to keep watching it over and over and over again because it's so enjoyable to see. <laughs> You have to check yourself a bit, don't you? Because it becomes so common to see her do everything so well that there's things that are just not normal. And Florida State's infield, Kaylin, I know you can speak to this across the board, especially last season, has been dynamite. Devin Flaherty rock solid up the middle as well. Right, as a pitcher, you know, when we got done throwing our bullpens and doing our PFPs, we really didn't do a whole lot. We, we collected foul balls and, you know, we kind of stood on the side and got to watch and really take in what the infield and the outfield was doing. And so we got to watch Sydney and Devin and Josie turning double plays, fielding ground balls, making awesome throws. And it was just, like I said, so enjoyable to watch as a softball nerd. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. And here's Brania Bailey batting fifth. And she's one for one with a single. She's got a really good looking swing. She does. She's got a real good looking swing last season. Hit nearly 300. The one home run, 14 RBI. And jumped on that first Sander Cock pitch and wasted no time jumping on another. This time back at Catherine. And she's able to put her away at first. We'll chat with Bailey's head coach, Trip McKay, when we come back to Tallahassee on the ACC Network Extra. Beautiful night here in Tallahassee. The sixth ranked Seminoles, the reigning national runners up, up two nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And Kennesaw State's head coach, Trip McKay, is standing by with Emily Peters. Emily? Thank you, Sean. Coach, what have you seen that you've been impressed with so far with your team? Um, right now, just kind of in the battle mode. They're, I mean, they're, they, they're in the battle mode, and that's uh, basically what we've got to stay with. You know, um, we're kind of young right now. We're throwing people out there, get them, get their feet wet, and, you know, we're, you know, playing Florida State, trying to get our feet wet. So it's, uh, it's always challenging to keep their nerves under control. Uh, but they're doing well with it and just stay in battle mode. How do you start to build some momentum against a team like Florida State? Uh, which is kind of tough. Um, you just uh, you look for any little detail that's uh, that could be a spark. Anything, you know, just a base hit, uh, something that gets up the middle, beating out a throw, uh, making a good play. Anything that gives us some kind of a win, some kind of energy. Looking for a spark. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Emily, thank you. You gotta love the candor from Trip McKay. He he's a great quote and a great personality, and he'll tell it to you like it is. Yeah, that was pretty funny, you know, talking about just the strength of Florida State and having to come out and play them your first weekend out is definitely nothing easy about that. So good for him. <laughs> Kerr pop that one up. It'll get out of play. Her grounded out her last trip to the plate. Seven, eight, nine, getting things started here in the bottom of the fourth for Florida State. Again, another nod to Perrin, who Kalen worked her most efficient inning in the last one. So really seem to have been settling in. It's 1-1 here against Kerr. What would you like to see out of Perrin here as she continues to, to battle with the Seminoles? I would like to see her continue to hit her spots, continue to be consistent in, you know, the off the plate pitches, the jam pitches that she's been giving Florida State. They've been swinging at her pitches, which is what you want as a pitcher. You want the hitters to do what you want them to do. And I mean, that's as impressive as that foul ball just was, it was a foul ball. So. Perrin, you know, in that situation, she's just got to remind herself, hey, that's just a long strike. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. We'll take another look at that long <laughs> strike. <laughs> that's what we tell ourselves. She knew, too, that it was foul right off the bat. Just missed that one. She'll stay alive, however. It'll remain one, two. Side on Kerr. 
and she was just able to hold up. On the ground a second. And a tight play at first, but an out recorded nonetheless. Galloway able to get the throw in there in time. Stepping in the batter's box, number nine, Kevin Clarity. So here's Devin Flaherty. One for one with a double to the left center gap that she stretched into a triple and then she would come into score right after. And you can see the pairing keeps trying to go to that outside corner, but her arm is kind of coming up short and her hips getting in the way a little bit, and she's not able to get her snap and release at the place that she, she needs to to be able to hit that corner with that screw. Waited on the off speed, but got underneath it. And speaking of underneath it, Cates is as well. Two down. Looks like we might have a pinch hitter coming in here for Florida State. Coach Alameda chatting things over with our home plate umpire, Craig Hyde. It's going to be the red shirt freshman, Hallie Waycaser, coming off of an ACL tear last season. One of a number of Seminoles who's been banged up over the last year or so. She and Janai Kerr, each with ACL injuries. Certainly want to also wish our best to Kirsten Landers the hero who sent Florida State to the Women's College World Series there at the end of that LSU game to uh, to advance and to keep the run going, uh, announced the other week at the Seminoles Fan Fest that she is going to have to undergo ACL surgery, and we'll see what the road ahead looks like for Kirsten Landers, but she's still in bright spirits, as she so often is, and uh, certainly will be a fixture in that dugout. She is, you know, and it's fr super frustrating from her pr perspective because she tore her ACL as a freshman, too. And so this, she's a red shirt junior sophomore COVID has me all messed up with the years. But, you Doesn't know, it have us all messed yeah, up? Yeah, but I mean, she's, she's supposed to have a total of, of six years, and now this ACL tear has taken away this year from her as well. And so it's very frustrating, and I don't really know what the plan is going to be for her in the future, but I do hope that she gets a speedy recovery and that whatever she ends up doing is what's best for her. This is a well hit ball out to left field. It'll bounce off the wall and Waycaser has extra bases. A stand up double with two outs on the board. And Waycaser got a hit like that earlier in the first game as well, but it was caught in an amazing play by Mercer center fielder. But right here, she just takes that pitch that's left a little too sweet over the middle and just drives it to that left center gap. And on top of that, that will turn the order over to Kaylee Much. Third trip through the order for Florida State. Mudge has walked and struck out in this one. Caught a piece of the rise. It goes 0-2 with Waycaser on at second. Yeah. 
spoiled another one. It goes 0 and 2. Karen going more off speed this inning. She is. I just noticed that. And honestly, that's what you want to do as a pitcher. In later innings, when the hitters have seen you quite a few times, you want to start bringing in that off speed to create friction for them. Drop ball got to the backstop. And now, Way Kaser is 60 feet away from plating what would be a third run for the Seminoles. So right there you can see that ball just takes kind of a weird hop, gets stuck under Kate's glove, and makes its way to the backstop. Two two too much, make it full. And so after consecutive strikes to start this plate appearance, consecutive balls to follow. Ground ball nearly snagged by Perrin. She's got to catch up to it, and she cannot get the throw to first. Waycaser scores. It is 3-0 Seminoles. That's a really hard situation. Usually, as a pitcher, you don't want to try and field those hard hit ground balls to the opposite side, to your right handed throwing side. Um, it just, it's too hard for you to try to reach across your body and then try to make the play. You want to let your shortstop or second baseman make that play for you. Much looking for an opportunity to pounce. Already got one big lead off at first. Now scampers back. An onslaught of speed coming to the plate and the base paths now for Florida State. Important for Perrin to retire the threat here. Good pitch. Really good off-speed pitch. Like I said, you want to start introducing that in later innings like she is now, and, and she's being very, very successful with it. Two in one to Sydney Sherrill. Cheryl has earned a walk in this game. And now out comes Sales to have a word with Perrin. And so the emphasis on how to retire Cheryl, certainly a topic of conversation there. And rightfully so, Kalen, because Sydney Cheryl is one of four Seminoles that have been named to the top 100 of the National Player Watch List. And so when you see the USA Softball preseason top 100, here's Catherine Sandercock at 20th, Sid Sherrill at 30th, Danielle Watson at 70th, and Mac Leonard, the transfer from Illinois State, checking in there as well at 74. Yeah, and that's an honor to be named any type of preseason top 100. I mean, that literally means you're one of the best players out of the 100 in the country and uh, that's so impressive that we have four on our Florida State team. And so Perrin will get back to work try to retire one of those four and off goes Mudge on the races and she's punched out at second. Sales with a heck of a throw to gun down the speedy Mudge. The Seminoles play to run, but they leave Mudge at second. Perhaps that momentum shift the Owls were looking for coming by the way of a pickoff. We'll be back after this.
The stick and ball sports or diamond sports, whatever you want to call them here at Florida State University, have historically been two of the best, and that is the case here this season as well. Preseason ranking 6 and 11 for softball and baseball, respectively. Both picked first in the conference. Preseason all ACC players for Lonnie Alameda, two. And Mike Martin Jr., or Meat as they call him around these parts, has two preseason All Americans and pitchers, Parker Messick and Bryce Hubbard. It will be a lot of fun to see what that baseball club can produce. And the word I've heard through the grapevine is that they've got more power there as well that they're packing in that lineup with a wealth of really talented pitchers. They get started uh, this coming weekend, and it'll be, again, fun to watch. And that'll be the same weekend Florida State goes down to the Tampa St. Pete Clearwater Invitational, and there's some monster matchups for Team 39 on the horizon as well. Definitely, definitely, and that's always such a fun tournament. In my opinion, it's like a miniature World Series because the amount of talent down there is phenomenal, and I know that we have big matchups in Tennessee and UCLA, and so those are gonna be really exciting for us, really to kind of see like where we are against these big name teams. Yeah, big time tip of the cap to Michelle Smith, Meg Arana, what's the entire crew who's been able to turn that tournament into what it's become. It just routinely now is drawing the best and brightest clubs in the country. And it is an early litmus test to be sure. Oh my goodness, Kaylee Mudge. With a bat in the hand, with the glove on the hand, either way, Mudgy is for real. Mudgy, yes. Mudgy is one of the most just awesome people and outfielders. I always knew that I wanted her out in the outfield when I was pitching because she catches the ball. She gets plays, or she makes plays. Well, all right then. Early out recorded for the Seminoles on defense. That'll bring up Kiara Cooper, who has one of Kennesaw State's two hits in this game. Strike called on the outside corner. And I remember him coming up. I didn't know he was filming or anything. I remember seeing him. That was on the other side. Cooper, a player who appeared in 13 games last season, had a walk off triple against North Alabama. A nice miss by Sander Cock just right off the plate. And you could hear the pop of the glove. Still in late innings. We're in the fifth, and she's still throwing 66. That's pretty impressive. On the ground and up the middle and through. A second hit for Kiara Cooper. You can see it just barely gets under the glove of Muffley and makes its way to center field. Honestly, that's still a win in Kat's book because she only got a single and Kat is a drop ball pitcher. She induces ground balls. And so from Cooper to Galloway, we go from the seven to the eighth spot of the order. Yeah, so far so good. It's been fun. I've been working crazy hours. I uh, get here at five in the morning. An all-region player at Campbell High School before joining the Owls of the A Sun. Check the swing, it's called ball one. Got her. 
What a fantastic Thank job you. by Kat, too. I mean, she went down and down and down with that rise ball, or with that drop ball, and then all of a sudden to come back up and in with that hard rise ball. It's just phenomenal. You know, the hitter's expecting to see something low. As soon as she sees something up, she's going to take a big hack at it, and we get the swing and miss. So with that strikeout, we go to the very bottom of the order, and Madison Miller. Miller, another freshman in the lineup. Throw down to second, doesn't quite get there in time to get Cooper. Edenfield had a pickoff in the Knoll's first game against Mercer. Was looking for another one there. It's not a bad throw, but Cooper just got a really great jump, and unfortunately, she just happened to get there before the ball did. It's very close, but I think that if maybe Michaela could have just gotten up and transferred it a little bit quicker, it would have been an out. And that was a big play by the young catcher, Edenfield. Ball nearly got away from her. In fact, it got out of her glove. Somehow she was able to knock it down with the free hand and stayed on top of it. That kept Cooper from getting the third. <laughs> Rise ball strike makes it two and one. What's great too about being a primarily drop ball pitcher and then adding in that rise every now and then is that you can actually trick the umpire. So he may think, you know, that a ball is a strike even if it is a little bit up and out of the zone because he's been so used to seeing that drop ball down and out. Easy call there as Madison Miller comes through empty to make it two and two. If Miller gets aboard, has plenty of speed in high school at Jackson County High School in Jefferson, Georgia is the school record holder in the 400 meter. Also led her softball team in stolen bases. I guess you could imagine that those two things go hand in hand together. Usually, yes. If you, <laughs> if you have a record, in, or a record in any kind of track, <laughs> you're probably pretty speedy, so you're probably going to have stolen bases in softball. Pretty safe to assume, right? Yeah. The numbers for Sandercock have been just as impressive as those accolades for Miller. Four and two-thirds innings of work, only three hits given up, four strikeouts by comparison. Cat has done a fantastic job this far. Crowd wants a strikeout. They don't get it, but they do get the force at third. Edenfield gets that throw out except it's at third with Sydney Sherrill instead of at second to get the lead runner. Wow. She just wanted to do something different. She, she just wanted to look and change the way that we saw it. And she made a phenomenal throw and got her out at third. And I, I love to see it. Welcome back to Tallahassee, where you are looking at the one and only Frankie Grizzle Malgrat, FSU's equipment manager from 2013 to now, who is known around these parts as Red Lightning. Football, soccer, and softball. He's from Key West, and he's a four-time national champion, my goodness, at football, twice at soccer, and here as well. And he's known on uh, Twitter as the only Big Red. And he and the Seminoles last year surely were running on the juice. Definitely. Kaylin. That's us at the World Series. You can see me in the background. And that's Frankie with the juice. And that was his saying for us. There's me again <laughs> drinking the juice before the game at the World Series. Um, but that was a part of who we were. Part of our, our identity was, you know, to always bring the juice. Frankie brought the energy to practice, travel, games. Didn't matter. He was bringing the juice, and he wanted to share it with us. So that's where the juice came from. It's on our national um, runner-up rings, bring the juice, and so he's love Frankie. Well, great to see him here. He's been an institution really ever since folks caught, uh, he caught folks' eye back in that football national championship run in 2013. 
And so he has uh, he has brought plenty of rings to this campus. Three different sports. That's that's an awfully impressive resume. He, yeah, he's an impressive guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sydney Sherrill's awfully impressive in her own right. I don't think anybody in America needed me to tell them that, but you have to make a segue somehow, and that was my attempt. She's 0 for 1 today with a walk. Last season, her batting average above 300, 34 RBI. And she's back up at the plate after Mudge was thrown out at second. So she gets a fresh plate appearance here. And the Knowles will start this inning at the two, three, and four hitters in the order. A second walk for Sid Sherrill. This one on four pitches. And that gives way to Mac Leonard. And as we've seen today, you really don't want to put anybody on base right before Mac Leonard comes up to bat because she has got some power. And that's somehow putting it lightly, I might think. <laughs> Honestly. And she's the type of person, like, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like she really exudes confidence. Amaya Ross checks in for Sid Cheryl. She will be the pinch runner. A player that Coach Alameda said might be the fastest player they've ever had here. You were mentioning it earlier, and when you consider Callie Harrod, who was a staple here and could get down the line in a hurry, Deja Bush, who came in and lit things up, Morgan Claveman as well, the speedy center fielder, to say that this girl might be the fastest they've ever had, don't blink. Yeah. Exactly, and you know, Amaya Ross has been a part of the Seminole family for a very long time. Her dad played football here in the 90s, so she's been a Seminole since birth, I would assume, and I'm super happy that she's here. So Ross is stationed at first for Sydney Sherrill. And Mac Leonard lays off the rise. Two and one. Hit a ton, but foul. side and Ross will turn on the afterburners she is safe at third throw gets past the first baseman and Mac Leonard takes that as her opportunity to make her way to second Second pinch runner in for Florida State, Autumn Belvey on its second in place of Mac Leonard. And of course, Amaya Ross on at third, chatting with her assistant coach, Troy Cameron. And Kalen, there's a lot of folks that whenever you talk about Coach Alameda, you instinctively talk about T. Will because they've been together for so long and he has been uh, as linked and as um, applauded and lauded here, and rightfully so, for that same amount of time. But Troy Cameron, when they brought him in after Craig Snyder made the move to go back home out to Texas and to be with the Aggies, Troy Cameron came in. He was the baseball coach at St. Thomas Aquinas down in the Fort Lauderdale area. But what I think a lot of folks didn't really realize is that he also did some international baseball stuff with the U15s, uh, Team USA. So, I mean, you've got... Travis Wilson, who had a tremendous playing career in his own right, 
and has come here and has been dynamite as Florida State's hitting coach. And now you bring in Troy Cameron, who is familiar with international competition, and that ball is towering high in the air. A chance here for Ross to tag up a play at third, gets Belvey as the Seminoles put another run across. Even though Belvi was thrown out there at third, that's something that the coaches really do preach, is that if you're going to make a mistake or if you're going to get thrown out, make it aggressive. And right there, she's aggressive. She tags up and she tries to do her best to get there, and, and that's what they're betting on. She's speedy, and she almost makes it. And so I, I'm sure the coaches aren't too upset with that because she was being aggressive. That'll bring up Edenfield. So just to wrap things up there, you've got Coach Alameda, who's won a national championship. She's done international softball as Team Canada's pitching coach. You've got Kaylee Rafter, who's competed for Team Canada and is now the head coach there. You've got Troy Cameron, who has gone up through the levels of professional baseball and has done such a tremendous job here working with Coach Alameda. And you got Troy Cameron, who's done international baseball stuff on the roster as well. What a coaching staff here in Tallahassee. It is, and the girls are, are very fortunate to be able to have all of that experience and all of that wisdom within the coaching staff. And Troy Cameron, or T-Cam as we call him, he fit right in, him and his family. He's got two of the cutest little kids ever and his wife. They just all came in. We accepted them immediately, and they've done a phenomenal job, the coaching staff, of really pulling us together teaching us as much as they can and they balance each other very very well good piece of hitting for Michaela Edenfield as well another hit for Edenfield tonight and Dion Riggs comes in to pinch run Speaking of international experience, Bethany Keene also has international experience. Was on the 2017 Team USA Junior National Team. And so when we're talking about the growth of softball, Kalen, just all these players with all these opportunities, the ability to get coached up with all these folks that have this international and professional experience, it really is invaluable. It is, and going back to what Coach Graf had said about international softball, it's so important. We want to be able to have softball in the Olympics because it creates a whole new platform and it does create more international interest in softball. FSU College Town, not too far away from the Seminole Softball Complex, always a popular spot. And with the caliber of play here at the Seminole Softball Complex, this too has quickly become a pretty popular spot on a weekend evening in Florida's capital city. And something tells me, Kalen Arnold, as we go throughout the rest of the season, when we think about that seven innings podcast, they might be talking about Florida State quite a bit throughout the remainder of the year. Beth Mowens, Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough, Holly Rowe, Jen Schroeder, Kayla Bro, Jenny Dalton Hill. Am I forgetting anybody? I think you pretty much named all of them. I think I got them. I think I got them. I, I've certainly tuned in a few times, so looking forward to them getting that podcast up to full song and cranked up and dissecting all the storylines and including the Seminoles, surely in those as well. They've got power surge here perhaps to talk about as well. Hopefully, yeah. I hope we're right up there in the ranks with Oklahoma in power and they're talking about the bombs that Florida State hit all weekend long. <laughs> the sack fly from Kaylee Harding was a super loud one. It looked like it was torched way out and then it ballooned in the air and ended up staying just inside the confines of the park 
Got an update for you in terms of personnel on the field for Florida State. Actually, a couple. Brooke Blankenship is the new shortstop for Florida State, and Kyle Lepresti is in behind the plate as well. Presti, a veteran catcher for the Seminoles. And Kalen, we were short on time in the first game. So since we got some time here as we're just starting the top of the sixth, I want to circle back um, to your work with Kaya because that COVID shortened year also included the Anna Shelnut injury. And so Kaya, as a true freshman, had to really be thrust into a role that, you know, small fish, big pond, and here you go. Uh, and you know what? It took her a little while, but by the time that shortened year had ended, she was starting to find her own. Right, Kaya did such a wonderful job when Anna was unfortunately injured and came in and like you said, it took her a little while because she wasn't used to catching us the way that Anna was. She had to figure each one of us out, but she put in the work, she caught all of our bullpens, any extra pitching time we wanted to do, she was there and she has created such awesome relationships with each one of her pitchers. She really knows who they are individually, how to handle them when they're getting frustrated and, and what to do in those situations. And just She's one of those people who is selfless and you really can't help but love being around her. And so she works with Sander Cock as the Seminoles try to work through the 9-1-2. And so we've ended a few innings on some throwouts and some pickoffs. So we have some players that are resuming plate appearances and getting fresh counts to start the next inning, as is the case here with Madison Miller. And this time she goes down swinging. The strikeout for Kat Sandercock, another one in her cap. And like I've talked about previously, Kat coming in with that rise ball, which is just so unexpected to most hitters. They don't expect to see the ball up in the zone from Kat. And so when they do, they're going to take a hack at it because they think that it's going to be something hittable. And then it just continues to break. Mary Greg Anderson. Take strike one. Kennesaw State winners of their first game today in this tournament format. They played Loyola Chicago. They beat them 8-5 in what was a pretty tight game, Kaylin. We were keeping track of it before we made our way over here. And 3-2, 5-4, and eventually it ended up being 8-5, Kennesaw State. Florida State will play both the Ramblers and the Owls tomorrow afternoon. This is all part of the larger Joanne Graf Classic here at the Seminole Softball Complex as Mary Greg Anderson goes down swinging, and Catherine Sandercock really seems to be in full song now. That's something that Kat does really well, is throwing that drop ball down and in when she's ahead of the count. Like, look at how it just drops, like, right there, right behind, you know, her back leg. And that's exactly what Kat wanted it to do. And she's she's very good. It's, it's a natural movement for her. Working that outside corner now. Got the cold strike on this, her 70th pitch. Freshman Hardeman fouled that one off to make it 0-2. Right, there's that Florida State coaching staff. End of the bat and into foul territory. Hardeman will make her way back to the plate.
Ground ball fielded by Cheryl, ranging to her left. And once again, Sid makes it look oh so easy. Florida State leads by four, heading to the bottom of the sixth. Welcome back to Tallahassee on opening weekend of softball season here in 2022. The Seminoles taking on Kennesaw State in the nightcap here on day one of the Joanne Graff Classic. Got a pitching change here for the Owls. Laura Bishop, the senior out of Woodstock, Georgia, checking in and doing the honors for Trip McKay and his squad. Bishop, a transfer out of the University of Georgia. Played just one game last season. That came against the University of Florida. Pretty good one to play in if you're at the University of Georgia. It's true. So a chance to uh, do the Sunshine State double here between the, the two power hitters in Florida. Definitely, definitely. Janai Kerr will lead us off here in the bottom of the frame. And there's a lot of tournaments, Kalen, taking place this weekend. This is one of them. And there are some other ones dotted throughout the country that have real marquee type matchups, one of which isn't too far from here in Leesburg, Florida, just down I-75 and I-4 from here where Virginia Tech is expected to take on Mizzou and Kentucky. And that Mizzou matchup, really, you and I were talking about it earlier. The bats that Larissa Anderson's club put on full display last year against Keeley Richard is a mouth-watering matchup. It's definitely going to be a great game to watch because we're going to see, is Missouri who has been so aggressive at the plate and had big bats and taken big swings, are they going to be able to be successful against the legend that is Keely Richard? And it's going to be so fun to watch, and I can't wait to see how it goes. Other matchups, too. I mean, Clemson taking on Texas. Texas with a lot of transfer activity there in Austin, and Clemson, the new kids on the block that have really have impressed a lot of people, not just in the conference, but around the country as to what they've been able to build as quickly as they've built it. Right. I think, you know, for Clemson, the biggest thing that they have coming back is Valerie Cagle. And she, like, you know, was the ACC Player of the Year and the ACC Freshman of the Year. You don't see that very often. She also made Team USA, so she is now a part of the national team. And she comes out as a double threat with a hot bat and pitching phenomenally. So it's going to be really exciting to see what she does against Texas. And then Duke, the ACC tournament champions. I mean, we talk a lot in the media, I think, about Clemson and how they've established a lot really quickly. Duke's only about two years further down the line as Janai Kerr ropes one into left field for a single. They're only about two years further down the line, Kalen, but again, an ACC tournament championship. They beat Clemson to win it. Marissa Young's got one heck of a squad there. They've landed a couple of transfers. They had a tight game against Kenny Gajewski's Oklahoma State Cowgirls. Uh, dropped that one in extras. They've got Arizona State on the horizon. They do, and Duke has, you know, so many awesome returning players in Deja Davis, Shelby Walters, and Peyton St. George. And I'm so excited to see what those players are able to do against number 21 ranked ASU. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you get a chance to measure your medal against a team from the pack, you really get a good idea of what you've got. And Marissa Young's made it very clear in the past that despite her program being young and a lot of her players being young, she's not afraid to go anywhere and play anyone at any time. And that type of mentality is going to serve the Blue Devils well. Well, and I think we saw that in the ACC tournament last year when they came out. Nobody expected them to do what they did, honestly. They expected the championship game to be between Florida State and Clemson. And Duke just came out, and they were kind of ravenous in the way that they played. They wanted it so badly, and, and they ended up with the win. They sure did, and it'll be a lot of fun to see. We basically talked about all the ranked teams uh -huh. because Florida State, they've got a – this is a matchup that you don't go, the casual fan would go, oh, look, Florida State's playing Texas or Florida State's playing Oklahoma. But Kennesaw State is a really good club that despite having to retool their lineup, 
despite not throwing Melanie Bennett tonight, who's been their ace for years, they're hanging in here with Florida State, and if they can string some hits together, one swing of the bat can tighten this thing up real quick. Definitely, like we saw last season, Kennesaw State came into the regional and they made a name for themselves, upsetting Auburn, which is a huge SEC contender, and you know, really just coming out with bats a blazing and they didn't make it easy for us to get out of the regional and right now you know they're not making this an easy game either they've done a really great job of holding us to only four runs yeah certainly this is a florida state offense that had exploded for seven runs in an inning earlier against mercer so this is a real spirited effort after their starting pitcher had hand issues and they had to go into the bullpen quicker than they would have imagined ever having to. So this is pitcher number three for them in Bishop who just walked Devin Flaherty. So here's Brooke Blankenship stepping in for Florida State. Checked in late against Mercer, stepped up to the plate and roped a base hit in her first plate appearance as a Seminole. And it was so fun to watch. She was so excited. You could see a big smile on her face as she rounded the bases and celebrated as she got to first. You love to see those things, and this is something that she's going to remember forever. Count quickly 0-2 to Blankenship. Again, a freshman out of Hudson, Florida. A look at an off speed outside the zone. It goes one and two. And Kalen, too, I think with the transfer portal, with the COVID year, a theme that we're seeing across the country is increased depth. And increased depth means increased competition, not just between clubs as that ball is given a ride out to center field. And a nice play is made out there in center. Kerr is able to tag and make her way to third. We'll take another look. Brooke absolutely annihilates that ball and is allowing Kerr to be able to tag up and get to third, get that extra base. It's not something that I expected from the freshman, but apparently Brooke Blankenship is also able to add power to this already powerful lineup. Good play out there by Greep, keeping Kerr on the base paths instead of around third and home. Runners now on the corners, but just to quickly get back to the point that I was making, that increased competition is going to be really good in terms of players, and I don't think work ethic's a problem here, let me be clear, but making players really step the level up to earn it because you got another player, this youngster, hot on your tails. Again, another really good play by Group, getting the ball in quickly. That holds Kerr at third. That ball goes so high up in the air, and Greep does a fantastic job of camping underneath it and then coming through it to be able to get the throw there before Kerr can get too far off the bag. So we'll see how that, that takes place. You mentioned earlier how there could be a battle between Blankenship and Josie Muffley, and you don't know. It could turn Josie Muffley, who's already been impressive here at Florida State, into Josie Muffley 2.0. We might see another level of Josie Muffley we've never seen before because there's a Brooke Blankenship here. Right, and that's what you want as a coaching staff. You want to have that depth on your bench. You want to have players who push each other to be better, and that's definitely something that we didn't have last year. Our infield was pretty much our infield. We didn't have people who could just come right off the base and go into play, and so that's something that I know Coach Alameda has got to be really excited about. Strike called against Christina Hartley, who's checked in here for the first time today. And there is Blankenship chatting it up with Sid Sherrill and the rest of that bench there in the Florida State dugout. 
The first day of a four-year career for Blankenship here in Florida State. And Hartley embarking on her first at-bat of what would be the same amount of time here. Freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, actually hit a home run in the Seminoles fan day just about a week ago. The only one to put the barrel on the ball and send one out of the park. So, yeah, caught that one. I was swinging through and, and seeing who was around and saw that one. That's awesome. You love to see that from freshmen. And it's so fun and it's so exciting to be a part of their first day getting to play on Joanne Graff Field and their first hits and everything that they get to experience, like I said, that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives. 2-2 two, two, the count to this particular freshman, Hartley. And down she goes. A little extra fire in the step of Laura Bishop as she runs over to her dugout Tip the cap to Bishop in her defense, eliminating threats and keeping themselves within touch. Catherine Sandercock has had quite the open to 2022. If you're not that fired up for softball season, I don't know what to tell you. And so fresh off of that, how about six strikeouts in six innings? Kaylin, you've mentioned she's predominantly a down ball pitcher. She has eight ground outs to go along with, but when you sprinkle in six Ks, it's pretty nice showing. It's so awesome, and it just talks to how she's matured and how she's grown as a pitcher under the coaching of Coach Alameda. Like, she has literally developed this rise ball that complements her drop ball tremendously, and that's where she's been getting most of her strikeouts from is coming up and in or up and away with that rise ball. And so there are the numbers again for Catherine Sandercock. Six innings of work, just the three hits given up, six strikeouts, eight ground outs, a couple of pop-ups, and there you have it. 20 batters face, 78 total pitches, and now we reach the top of the seventh. It is do or die time for the Owls. Cates, Sales, Bailey, three, four, five, set to square off with Cat. And honestly, seeing Kat act crazy like that in the dugout, oh my gosh, that chain, I just have to, I have to stop. That's, that's cold blooded. My and gosh. And that was sick nasty. Oh my gosh. That's all I can even say right now. It's just, oh my gosh, 49 miles an hour coming after a 66 mile an hour drop ball. You cannot get any better than that. Just beautiful. I have chills. And that's well that's just me being a pitcher. Like I I just have chills now. Like that was I just want to watch it over and over and over again. Well fortunately on the ESPN app you will have <laughs> the ability to do that. That's awesome. Not product placement, not product placement, not product <laughs> placement. Oh man. pop up and out of play off the bat of Kate's. But like I was saying, you know, I had just talked about how Kat was so even kill and how she was just, you know, calm and collected in the circle. And you see her smile every now and then. She's having a good time. And then you see her over there just shaking Ali Dubois like a crazy person. And it just, but that's how she is, you know. This ball is tattooed out to the wall. Kate's making it count, trying to spark a rally and sliding in underneath the tag. Good place to start if you're Kennesaw State. Well, right here, Kat unintentionally left that changeup just a little too high. And that's what you've got to do. When you're ahead in the count, you've got to get that changeup low and in the dirt. You want them to chase after that pitch. You can say it's just a little bit too much in the zone. Um, and she was able to make pretty solid contact with it. And so the Owls are in business. And Florida State's fans are well aware. Sales flares it directly to Flaherty, and that is not what the Owls were looking for. Nine, 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 
What's so great about Kat's demeanor in the circle is that even though she just had that ball absolutely tattooed off of her, you can't tell. She is so calm and collected, and her infield feeds off of that, and they know that no matter what, Kat is still in control. She doesn't allow things to get too big. On the other side, if you are Kennesaw State, beyond the fact that you were going 3-4-5 right in the heart of the order, and that's where you would like to be if you need to spark a rally, this is also a player who, until Cates, was one of only three who had recorded a hit. Actually, one of two, because the other one, uh, Cooper, had recorded the other two. And here she goes opposite field. That will drop. Cates did not get a good jump on that one, but runners are now on the corners. It keeps the production going, and now with the sack fly or a squeeze or anything like that, you get that run across. You got to start somewhere if you're the Owls and you're starting to string together hits. So in this situation, if I'm Cat, I want to keep Nice, easy, light ground ball on the infield, not allowing the runners to advance, getting the easy outs, or even trying to turn a double play. Off the end of the bat and out of play. Reap has made a couple of really strong plays out in center to keep the Seminoles honest, to keep the lead at four. It could have been more than four nothing if not for her efforts out in the outfield. Can she provide some fireworks and some momentum with the bat in her hand as well? A fly out and a strikeout for Greep last season. Just above 275 was the batting average, nine RBI. Well, that one foul. Here we go, A consistent starter for Kennesaw State over the years, was named to the all freshman team of the A Sun back in 2019. Looking to come through in a big moment, and instead she goes down swinging. The Seminoles are on the doorstep, but they have to get through Cooper one more time. Phenomenal pitch by Sander Cox. She goes up and away with that kind of a screw rise ball, getting the batter to chase, which is exactly what she wants to do when you're up in the count. Kiara Cooper. Two for two. The only Owl who's been able to consistently figure something out against Catherine Sandercock has a 1-0 count. It always seems like the game finds a way <laughs> to make sure that with runners in scoring position, two outs, last inning, the one girl who's consistently been able to get a hit is the one that's up to bat. Big cut there. It goes one and one. Just 13 games played a season ago. Another big cut. It's one and two. Cat's doing what she does best right now, just throwing that drop ball, which is her strength. And you can see Kennesaw State, they're feeling the pressure a little bit. They want Cooper to come up with the big hit, and Florida State wants Cat to get the strikeout. Down she goes, and that'll do it. Catherine Sandercock goes the complete game, and the Knolls shut out the Owls for nothing in the nightcap of the Joanne Graff Classic here on night one in Tallahassee. It's been a phenomenal first day. I'm so happy to be here in Tallahassee watching the Seminoles play, and I look forward to see what we got tomorrow.
In a moment, we'll check in with Emily Peters, who will grab our player of the game once the Seminoles conclude their high five circle out on the dirt. But Kaylin, in the meantime, how do you assess what you've seen out of Florida State today? You saw the power in game one. You saw them scratch out and grit out a win here against the Kennesaw State team that didn't really give up a whole lot. I think that, you know, in that first game, like you said, we really saw the power that Florida State has, and we really got to see what this lineup can do, and we got to see defense. We got to see Danielle Watson come in really, really strong, and we got to see Emma Wilson finish out strong. So that's really good. That's really exciting as a Florida State fan to see all of those possibilities. Coming into this Kennesaw State game, you know, it was a little bit more of a challenge, and I think that Florida State 